Philip fractions name the same part of a whole, part of a set, or the same point on a number line. These fractions that are equivalent or equal are going to have different numerators and denominators, but they're worth the same amount. Here's how that works. I have a rectangle. It's been cut into two equal pieces. So this rectangle represents one half. One over two. One half. Without changing this blue section, I can change what this model represents by cutting it into smaller pieces by drawing a new line. So if I draw a line here, keep in mind in a fraction the pieces have to be the same size, so I have to draw another line here. And so now I had two halves, but I've cut each of those halves into two parts of their own. So instead of having just one out of two parts shaded, I now have two out of four parts shaded, which is the same as two-fourths. So one-half is equal to two-fourths. We can continue this all day. I can cut it again. This time I'm going to cut across. I'm going to pretend that line's perfect. I know it's not. But now I have two, four, six, eight pieces, and four of them are shaded. So each of these three fractions are equivalent or equal. I never changed the amount that was colored blue. All I did was change the size of the piece. We want to write two fractions to represent the shaded portion in these two models. Just like before, we are going to write a fraction, but I want to think about the size of the piece. So right here, I can see, obviously, that I have two parts shaded, that's my numerator, out of how many pieces in all? Two, four, six. So two sixths is a fraction that is represented by this model. But a moment ago, I changed the size of the piece. I started with a larger piece and I cut them smaller. These two pieces, I could actually do the opposite. I could put them together. And if I think about this as one piece, and then these two as the second size, same piece, and then these two, then I have created three equal sized pieces, and only one out of those three equal sized pieces has been shaded. So two thirds is equivalent or equal to one third. This one is totally different. This time, instead of having a rectangle that's been cut into parts, I have what is called a set. Now this set has been divided into groups, I can see, because I have some blue ovals here. And so if I'm looking at this set as ovals, I see that there are five ovals. Out of those five ovals, one of them has circles that are shaded green. So this model right here could represent one-fifth. Now I started by looking at the blue ovals and I need to come up with another equivalent fraction though. So this time, instead of focusing on the larger piece, the blue ovals, I'm going to look at just the green circles. And I see that there are two, four, six, eight, ten circles in all. And out of those ten, two of them are shaded. So this model could represent one-fifth if I'm looking at the blue ovals as the whole. Or if I'm counting each individual green circle, then it, this model could also represent two-tenths. Again, these fractions are equivalent. Now we had a model and a picture and we looked at those and we made our own fractions, but you can do this, find equivalent fractions with multiplication or division. Often we'll do this when we start to perform fraction operations, when we need to add, subtract, multiply, or divide, because you need a fraction that has a different numerator or a different denominator. When we're looking at using multiplication, in this case I have a fraction, two-fifths, and it's equal to something tenths. So the equivalent fraction has already been started for me. To figure this out, I want to look at, in this case, the denominator, because that's what I'm given both of. There's nothing missing here. So I'm looking at the five, and I'm asking myself, using multiplication, how can I turn five into ten? Well, five times two would make 10. And so whatever you do to one part of the fraction, you have to do the exact same thing to the other part of the fraction. So times two for the denominator, I have to multiply the numerator by two as well. 
So 2 times 2 is 4. So 2 fifths is the same as 4 tenths. Let's look at this one. In this case, we're going to use division. Had a fraction 15 24, so then we see that it's going to equal 5 somethings. We're not sure what. I know that it's division here because not only does it tell me, but I'm going from a larger number to a smaller number. So what can I divide 15 by that will give me 5? 3. 15 divided by 3 is going to make 5. Whatever operation and number you use to change, in this case the numerator, we have to do the same thing to the denominator. So I have to take 24 and divide it by 3. That way I'm making a balanced change. The way I change the top is the way I'm going to change the bottom. So 24 divided by 3 is going to be 8. So 15 24 is equal to 5 eighths. Now we're not always going to be given a fraction equal to something and then a denominator or numerator already given. We can make our own. To do this, we're going to still multiply or divide. When we have a fraction 5 6 and we just get to make up our own equivalent fraction, I can choose any number that I want to multiply by. Now if I choose 1, because it's easy, 5 times 1 is 5, 6 times 1 is 6, that's still going to give me 5 6, so I didn't change anything. So I can't choose 0 and I can't choose 1, but other than that, I can choose just about anything. I'm going to make it simple. 5, I'm going to do times 2. 5 times 2 would be 10. And again, if whatever you do to the numerator, I have to do the same to the denominator. So 6 times 2 is 12. So 5 6 is equal to 10 twelfths. Now I chose 2, but what if I wanted to choose 5? Okay. 5 times 5 is 25. 6 times 5 is 30. So 10 twelfths, 25 thirtieths. Both of these are equivalent to 5 6. Now I could get crazy and choose 100. 5 times 100, I'm just making a note here to show you what I'm multiplying by. 5 times 100, 500. 6 times 100, 600. And yes, 500, 600 is the same as 5 6. So you can choose any number you want to multiply by. When we divide, we get to choose a number to divide by. And we're going to divide the numerator and the top, or excuse me, the numerator and the denominator by the same number. The only problem is that number that we pick has to go in to the numerator and to the denominator. So if I divide by 1, then I'm going to get the same thing, so I'm not going to do that. Can 10 be divided by 2? Yes, it can. I also have to make sure that 2 will work with the denominator, which it will. So I'm going to divide by 2. 10 divided by 2? Gets me down to 5. 20 divided by 2, again we're doing the same thing. 20 divided by 2 is 10. So 5 tenths is the same as or equal to 10 twentieths. Could I divide by 3? No, because 10 divided by 3 doesn't work out. Can't do 4, but I can do 5. 10 divided by 5 is going to be 2. 20 divided by 5 is going to be 4. So 2 fourths is the same as 10 twentieths as well. I also know I can do 10. So 10 divided by 10 is going to be 1. 20 divided by 10 is going to be 2. So 1 half is the same as 2 fourths is the same as 5 tenths is the same as 10 twentieths. When you're making or naming equivalent fractions, it could literally go on and on and on. I'd like for you to name some equivalent fractions in your math journal, please. Write two fractions for this model here, the gr shaded green section. Use multiplication or division to find equivalent fractions. Notice these two have been started for you. But then down here on number four, I want you to name two equivalent fractions on your own for three-sevenths.